Traditional Japanese houses are beautiful but notorious for being cold. That's because they were designed to be airy and drafty for the Japanese summer, which is hot and humid. But this made winter tough. It made sense. Before air conditioners, it used to be easier to warm yourself up by huddling around heat sources like the Irori and Kotatsu heated tables than cooling the house down in summer. But we knew what to expect from this type of house when we bought it, and our house is no exception, as you might have seen in my video on living in this house in winter. It was always our plan to make the house warmer. In fact, we insulated the walls and floors during the first stage of the renovation, and we're happy with their performance. They're not the problem. The single pane windows, air gaps, poor insulation in the ceilings, and the vented eaves and attic are the main reasons why the house loses heat and gets cold once we turn the heating off. But we figured we could improve some of these things when we had the time and money. I've been working on insulating some of the ceilings, and the new windows are coming in a few months, but that's another story. In this video, I'll show you the work I've been doing so far, some of the typical insulation used in Japan, and how much it costs. So I started work up here in the attic. The first stage that I'm working on is insulating the first floor ceilings. So between the first floor ceilings and the attic floor, you have this large gap here, which is about 170 centimeters or five and a half feet. I've taken out some of the existing insulation, but there wasn't much insulation to begin with. The carpenters did put some new insulation up here when they built this ceiling and there was some basic insulation on some of the other ceilings from over 30 years ago. You can see all the air gaps in the eaves, so we're losing a lot of heat when it goes through the ceilings than out there. I'm not trying to make the first floor ceilings airtight, I just don't think it'll be possible given the way they're constructed. So what the insulation here will do is slow the heat transfer from the first floor into this space. Eventually I'll insulate the upper attic walls and roof too, and that will be the next step after this to make it all more effective. What we're planning to do with this attic space is to make it into a multi-purpose room. Uh, perhaps put a projector or a large screen over there, make it a movie room, a uh, place for the kids and their friends to hang out. That is when we're not working up here, as this little area is supposed to be a separate office space for my wife and myself. The challenge in insulating traditional Japanese houses is that their basic wall structure was not originally designed to hold insulation. As with wooden houses everywhere, moisture and rot is the enemy, and the houses in Japan have evolved with this in mind given the wet summer climate. So when insulating a house like this, you need to be very mindful of not creating any spaces where moisture might get trapped. This style of exposed pillar and beam wall is called Shinkabe and is part of what gives traditional houses and temples their classic Japanese look. But it serves a practical purpose too, as it allows the wood to dry out both on the inside, where humidity can be a problem, and the outside, which is exposed to both humidity and heavy rain. This is the space above the main bedroom and kids' rooms that I'm working in during this video. This pillar here is this pillar here. It's a square post about 120 millimeters wide. There's not really enough space to insert adequate insulation in the bays here, so you either need to build out the walls on the outside or on the inside. Up to now, we've had no problems with moisture buildup or mold inside the house. So you could say the drafty house is working to design. The house does get hot inside, but it's not too bad. In summer, visitors have remarked that the house is surprisingly cool. But that's also because we tend to leave many of our windows open all day during summer, particularly the upper windows. And as long as there is even just a slight breeze, the house stays comfortable. Having said that, last summer we put air conditioners slash heaters into the three bedrooms as they are smaller than the main living spaces and can get a bit too hot to sleep comfortably in sometimes. Or maybe I've gotten soft as I grew up in an old weatherboard house in Australia that didn't and still doesn't have air conditioning. These fiberglass bats were put in by our carpenters a couple of years ago. They're one of the cheapest and most common insulation products in Japan. Most bat insulation in Japan comes packed in bags like this. 
The front face is a vapor barrier, while the rear is perforated. Back in summer, while preparing for the installation of the air conditioners in the boys' rooms, I took out some of this insulation and then decided to take it all out and replace it with more layers of a better insulation. I'll reuse this in another part of the house. The tricky part about working here, apart from the awkward height of the working space, is that the suspended ceilings are not strong enough to hold my body weight, so I can only stand directly on a few small sections where there is a wall below.
I decided to use 75mm thick polystyrene foam boards for the walls here just because I thought it would be easier to install and reduce thermal bridging from the pillars and beams exposed outside. The house wrap is probably unnecessary but I thought it might be useful to have to keep some air off the insulation. I've made sure there are air channels between the insulation and the beams so that any humid air or moisture can move up and out the gaps in the eaves. I've done it this way to try to maintain the original function of the walls, allowing the wood to breathe and dry on both the inside and outside. By the way, I'm just putting in the lower parts of the walls before I lay the ceiling insulation down, so I hopefully don't need to work in here again afterwards. So I've just finished up putting in the studs for the house wrap and the insulation. They're not very strong at all, they don't need to be, it's not structural, it just needs to be able to hold the house wrap and the insulation in place.
So that's the boys' bedroom ceiling insulation done. The total cost so far is about 60,000 yen or 480 US dollars at today's exchange rate. Plus the time of course doing it bit by bit over a few weeks. It won't really be as effective until the whole attic is done but it's a start. We applied the same basic approach to the walls downstairs though we used the slightly more expensive Neoma phenolic foam boards which have a higher R rating per millimeter of thickness. Up here where wall thickness doesn't matter so much, I'm using the cheaper panels. By the way, I'm not required by code to cover the foam with a thermal barrier. Because I didn't want to put two impermeable layers on top of each other, I used earth wool on top of the rock wool as it was one of the only unfaced products I could find here in Japan. Earth wool is sold locally, but it's a bit more expensive than the rock wool. I tried taking the plastic off the rock wool, but it didn't come off as easily as I had hoped and it would just end up as landfill, so I gave up on that. I'll repeat this process on all of the walls and ceilings and then also start work on the roof. Thanks for watching. As always, let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll see you next time.